Well, good afternoon, um, fellow researchers, the Board of Judges, ma'am, may hapon ma'am. It is an honor and a great pleasure to be in front of you right now, ladies and gentlemen, to have shared the output of the painstaking that I have been pouring out just to give um, a study that will somehow address the needs and the, uh, and the problems of the indigenous people, specifically the Bajaos. The title of my study is Lived Experiences of Bajaos in Cebu City. Yes. Actually, I had this very long encounter with them because ever since I was young, I was residing to a place very adjacent to the community of the Bajaos in Cebu City that for almost six decades, um, sorry, for almost three decades, because my age is 33, based on my own personal observations ever since then, I really have this um, curiosity and eagerness because questions keep crossing on my mind. Why are these people that even almost four decades back and up to this very point they still are as who they were the philippines is a country with of course known to have the diverse various cultures wherein this comprises several um indigenous peoples otherwise otherwise known as the cultural minorities. One of these cultural minorities is of course the Bajau. <coughs> who are or who is the Bajau? Bajaus, based on its definition from the study of R.P. Makalandang 2009, Bajaus are sea gypsies, skilled fishers, sea nomads who live in coastal settlements in Hulu, Tawi-Tawi, and Sitangkai. But because of the threat of the rebels and there were also abuses done by the preponderance majority, majority towards them that is why Bajaus are now scattered from um, the islands of Davao, Surigao, Sambuanga, Basilan, Bohol, Cebu and even there are Bajaus in Luzon as of the time being. And up to this very point, Bajaus here in Cebu City are actually seen asking arms on the streets, asking food, doing some acts of mendicancy just somehow for them to survive. And secondly, based on the data of DITEL, because before I was joining State University CTU, I was once a teacher of senior high school in Dipet and it happened that I had students who were the Bajaus. Based on the data of Dipet, it came out that Bajaus tend to be having the, the low cohort survival rate because they tend to drop out. See for instance, during grade 7, there are 45 Bajaus enrolling studying however when they will be in grade 10 only 10 to 15 who actually reach at that particular level now my study this intended to describe the live experiences of a jobs in terms of their ways of life their challenges encountered and somehow the coping mechanism that they have usually utilized in facing these problems. This study utilized a qualitative phenomenological study wherein it attempts to understand the Bajau's perceptions, perspectives, and understanding based on a particular situation, a situation that is actually asked to them by the researcher. The respondents are 30 Bajau's who are residing, of course, in Barangay Mambaling, 
sitio punton Cebu City and I have utilized the purpose of something in which the criteria are these respondents must have been dwelling in that community for not less than 10 years and they must of course be willing to participate in the course of the study. Now, I have also done the one-on-one -on -one interview towards the Bajau to exactly ascertain and explicate whatever um, their perceptions, ideas, out of the experiences that we have. Of course, the environment, as what I said minutes ago, it was at Mambalin, Cebu City, Sikha Puntun. The, um, the data gathered were actually interpreted used but um, with the use of Kolaisi approach. Kolaisi approach is a form of um, thematic analysis wherein it follows seven steps. Principally, during the act of interview, the respond or the, the interview and uh, the respondents responses were actually recorded. Such recording would be the basis of um, intensive review in order to estimate significant statements and from those st statements we will create um, um, themes, the emerging themes and from these themes it shall be categorized and be of course given an implication. Next. These are the results and discussions of mine. So principally way of life based on the theme kinship system it was found out that Bajaos are very family oriented. They have an extended family ties because after the conduct of marital ceremony parents do encourage their offsprings to just stay in their household where they come from. The dowry system before a certain sutor, a male sutor, could get the sweet yes of a female bajau, the sutor, for instance, there are 10 sutors. It's not about the feelings or who is actually loved by that woman. They would base the decision on whosoever among the 10 will give first the dowry amounting to not less than 15,000 pesos. Now, during courtship stage, it is so clear that according to the responses, um, the respondents confided that physical endearment or especially the so-called premarital thing, sexual intercourse, is totally prohibited in the community. Yeah, it, they are so articulate with that. Then they've got the early marriage, and you will be surprised, ma'am and sir, because Pajau females and males are allowable to get married at the age of 13 years old. Three years. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, please. The way of life, they have the philosophy um, stating follow and protect the culture, customs, traditions, at the same time, be a friend to others. The, the way of governing the community um, by the chieftain is a form, um, a form of aristocracy, wherein if you happen to be an offspring, a male offspring of the chieftain, you're gonna be um, selected to be the next chieftain. So both um, the livelihood fishing, pamphlet making, selling of shell scrap rods and face towel. So in terms of religion, it is animism. Their god is Tuhan. Their religious practices are the ashes of the sisters of the medicine. Pray to Tuhan, no embalming. Meaning after you die, you will just have to be ligokon ka, pahumuntan ka, pahagatulin and katiran ka, and there shall be no embalming again. Iputos kang malong and you will be buried. That's gonna be the internment. Challenges. Low education attainment, low income, lack of sustainable livelihood, malnourished children, societal exclusion, because somehow they experience, though it's so premature to say this, but because of the quantity of the respondents, but they experience the marginalization, somehow the discrimination in, 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 the, in the society. Coping mechanism that they usually do, pray, pray and trust to one, socialize with friends, attend counseling by Sister Evelyn, Bahala na attitude. And these are the following rules of Bajaos and their own unique ways of living which demand equal respect. Their challenges are low educational attainment, low income, lack of sustainable livelihood, malnourished children, and societal inclusion. Their usual coping mechanisms are being the two ones in the company of their friends, be counseled by Sister Evelyn, 
a certain um, non coming from a certain foundation, and of course, they have the bahalan attitude. My recommendations are respect the bajaos, ways of living, conduct sustainable livelihood trainings, provide technical vocational programs for them, develop and strengthen camaraderie between minority groups and maturity groups, and lastly, create a follow up study about determinants of bajaos school leavers in Cebu City and bajaos discrimination in relation to the philosophy of cultural. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Ingrid Velgas from Cebu Technological University. He explored Bajau's ways of life, challenges, and coping mechanisms, and he found out he was using phenomenological inquiry using Kalaisi's data analysis method. Okay, and he found out that Bajau's have unique culture and tradition. Okay, so. Are there questions from the judges? Yes, you have a very good study. Yes, um, I would like to ask because uh, what is exactly our thing? Um, when I was asking the question, ma'am, to, to the respondents, they do consider their, their religion as animism, but they have this God, the Almighty One, to whom they, know, they have known, the name is Tuhana. How about that, Sister Emily? Is she a Catholic? Yes, ma'am. Sister so Evelyn. It's contrary because their coping, coping mechanism is through Sister Evelyn's uh, consultation or counseling. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you for that question, ma'am. Yes, it's so paradoxical that there is, there is this nun who extends um, her help to the Bajau community, in which the religion of that nun is not actually having that kind of religion that Bajaus have. But just because Sister Evelyn, ma'am, is actually one of the advocates of a particular foundation in Australia sent to them in order for Sister Evelyn to guide the community, especially with the chieftain as um, advices and guidance. So, I guess the Bajaos tend to accept Sister Evelyn because also of the colossal help extended by the foundation to, to the society, to the community. Thank you so much. Thank you.